Hello again. This is Helen with another video for week one of the content creation module. This time, we'll focus on Ruth Clark's six principles of effective e-learning. One good source to turn to is the work of Ruth Clark. Based on research studies in cognitive psychology done by Richard Mayer with several colleagues at the University of California at Santa Barbara, Clark identified six principles that contribute greatly to effective e-learning. Much of this is based on cognitive load theory related to what we covered in the last video. Let's look at what each of these areas refer to. For each of these principles, we've provided a sample of before and after applying the principle to improve the content. These examples are from actual content in other D4L modules. Screens upon screens of text aren't very engaging for learners. Adding visuals that support what's in the text can help keep learners' attention. The science behind this is that the printed text and the visual each work separately to be processed into long-term memory so that learning is increased. Try to add visuals whenever you can. The principle of contiguity often relates to issues of scrolling on a device. If a learner has to scroll down to see an image and they can no longer see the related text, that means that it's harder on their working memory to remember what the text said and relate it to the graphic or vice versa. It's much better if related text and graphics are placed near each other. For many learners, listening to narration that explains a visual concept can be more effective than reading a text with the same information. Working memory has separate storage areas for visual and phonetic information. Examining an illustration and looking through explanatory text can overload the visual sensory experience, but by replacing the printed text with narrated text, this information can expand into phonetic storage. If the combination of graphics and text seems like too much, then use audio or video formats that allow you to replace the text with narration. However, if you add audio narration but keep the printed text as well, this redundancy is setting your learners up for overload. Then learners are trying to process two different visual components along with the third audio component, which can be too much. It is sometimes still appropriate to narrate the text on the screen if there are no graphics. In that case, the visual aspect of the text is not competing with an illustration for processing in working memory but the audio is still processed separately and the two together can increase learning. This can also be helpful for learners who aren't strong readers. Just be careful about using redundant text and audio along with anything graphic. Look at these cute cats! But wait, what is that slide supposed to be about? Maybe that GIF got your attention, but it's actually distracting from the learning objective rather than supporting it. In this example, the illustration really isn't related, but in some cases they might seem to be related, but still really take away from the most important points of your instruction. Keep in mind what your learner should be focused on and only include media that can help with that focus. As you saw in the community module, social engagement has a positive effect on learning. Some small changes can help with this, even just using I and you instead of more formal language. A face on screen, either a still image or a video can help. And this doesn't always have to be a human being. Cartoon animals have worked just as well in some studies. The science here is that a social presence on screen makes the learning feel more like a conversation in which your participation is more active than simply observing in a way that is more passive. Include a visual social presence if you can, perhaps a photo or a video of yourself, or at least use conversational language to engage your learners. Now that you're grounded in best practices for creating e-learning content generally, you're ready to move on to specific concerns around usability and accessibility.